All right, we have a special guest with us today. This is Noxie, and he just really <laughs> wanted to make these recipes with He's us. He's just really in the Thanksgiving spirit. He totally He's feeling is. very grateful today. All right, today we are making Grandma's Thanksgiving dressing recipe. We grew up with this recipe. I have an eight by eight inch pan here, and I'm just gonna spray it with nonstick cooking spray. Look at you one-handed. I know. I'm doing great. <laughs> Not only are these make ahead dinners, the air side dishes, these are make with the kid in your hand. Yes. <laughs> there is stovetop stuffing, but to make grandma stuffing, I like to use this. And then okay. to this mixture, we're gonna add one cup of chopped apples. Nice. And any apple will work for this recipe. We've used Granny Smith. I think these are gala apples. Yeah. Really? How many apples did you use here? I used two. Two apples, okay. So, and I just cut them up into little bite-sized pieces, and then we're also gonna add some fresh mushrooms. Nice. Nice. And then three stalks of celery. And we've just chopped those up pretty fine as yeah, well. Yeah, we did so. do these little. I, my kids will pick them out if they're a little bigger, yeah. but little ones oh, you in this want one butter. is better. Huh. Butter's good. I'm with you. Thanksgiving mm -hmm. dinner. Right. You know. okay. And then, this is the fun part. You're going to add your one fourth cup of butter okay. into one and a half cups of boiling water. And then the butter is just going to melt in the water. Nice. You can kind of stir it around. And then we will pour this once it's all melted over the rest of the ingredients and mix it all together, fully incorporate it. Pretty much melted. Yeah. There's a little bit of butter, but it will still, yeah. it It'll will melt as we go, together. right? <laughs> so carefully pour over everything. And then you'll want to make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. degrees. Yes. So we'll just mix this together and then we'll add it in. So you can put this in the fridge just like this. So cover it with foil, stick it in the fridge, and the night before, two nights before, it will totally be fine. And then when it's time to pull it out and cook it, you just take the foil off. Then you're gonna cook it for about 35 to 40 minutes. The next recipe is our make ahead mashed potatoes. Now, you have to do it the right way you or do. they kind of get stiff and it's nasty. True. Okay, so we're gonna teach you today the best way to do it. Of course, I'm gonna use the Instant Pot. It's There's just no what other I do. Way. I know. Let's be honest. If you guys don't have an Instant Pot yet, I highly suggest getting one, especially if you're in charge of Thanksgiving because yes. cooking things in there is a breeze. But if you do have an Instant Pot or you're looking to get one and you don't know how to use it, we actually created an entire Instant Pot guide. We walk you through the moment you take it out of the box to cooking the basics such as rice and pasta and potatoes. You can go to the instantcookingcourse.com and you'll find it there. But let's get to cooking these potatoes. This one is a little bit bigger. It's an eight quart. If you have a six quart, this will work just fine. It's about three pounds of Yukon gold potatoes. I like using the gold potatoes. I just feel like the skin tastes better than yeah. the rest of potatoes. And it's Thanksgiving. I'm too lazy to peel potatoes on Thanksgiving. <laughs> then to make sure the Instant Pot pressurizes, you need about a half a cup to a cup of water. Then you just put the lid on. That simple. Okay. Now if you have a little knob right here, make sure that it's on sealing, not venting. Some of them automatically do it now, which is so nice. Once the timer is done and it's done cooking, you're gonna release the pressure. So like push your little venting knob, it will let everything out. I already did that, so we don't have to watch that. Then once all the pressure's out, you can lift your lid. Okay, there's a little bit extra water in there. So I'm gonna get my little strainer thing. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I use it all the time, it's my favorite. It goes on like all pots and pans, even your Instant Pot. Um, I think it's like, what, 15 bucks on Amazon, but probably one of my favorite kitchen gadgets. Right here in the Instant Pot, I'm gonna mash all the potatoes with a potato masher. Now you can use beaters, but I like my potatoes with a little bit of chunks in them, so I like to use a potato masher. And we're just gonna mash all these babies. Or I mash them completely. You wanna add some of your ingredients because we want it to melt in there. So I'm gonna add about four ounces of cream cheese. I'm just eyeballing here, there we go. Then I'm just gonna add one tablespoon of butter right now. While the cream cheese and butter are melting, we're gonna add about two thirds cup of sour cream. These are good, like, loaded potatoes. Because they are not creamy enough, we're gonna add a fourth cup of whole milk. And then 
about a half teaspoon of salt. You can add more salt if you want to. I love salt, so I would probably add a little bit more, but we'll follow the instructions today. Now we're gonna take the potatoes. I mean, look how creamy those are. And we're gonna put them in the bottom of a nine by 13 pan. Now, if you hate dishes like I do on Thanksgiving, use the aluminum foil pans. Like those things are perfect because when you're done, you can just throw them away. Unless you're really fancy. My grandma was so fancy that, I mean, everything was like China for Thanksgiving. So we have two more tablespoons of butter that I'm gonna melt real quick and we're going to put that right on top. The butter's all melted. Now we're just gonna brush it on. Now we want them all ready to go. So to make our lives a little bit easier. So I, I have a little paprika that I like to just sprinkle right on top. I think that just makes it taste so good. This is what my mom used to do. And it makes it a little more fancier. And then if you like parsley, we do a little bit of parsley on top too. So what you're gonna do is stick these, you're gonna cover them, stick them in the refrigerator for up to 24 hours. You don't wanna go longer than 24 because then they become a little bit pasty. But 24 hours is like your golden time. When it's time to cook them, you're going to pull them out of the refrigerator. You're gonna let it sit for about 30 minutes. That's the secret, let it sit. Then you're gonna cook them 350 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes, just until everything is heated through. Time to taste them. I love how you came back just for the tasting. I know, uh, I, can, I can smell them. I knew they were done. <laughs> I love it, I love it so much. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't even need gravy on those. Me neither. So good. Me neither, but gravy is good. Yeah. <laughs> Five out of five. Mine too. Easily, easily. Go for a second bite. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> for this recipe, we are making our mom's sweet potato recipe. Yes. It is so good. And we are using sweet potatoes, not yams, but you can use yams if that's what you prefer. Right, but this really is for sweet potatoes. It's, and it's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we have four pounds of sweet potatoes. Yes. So we actually boiled these earlier yes. just to make life a little bit easier. But then you just want to peel all the skin off. You don't want the skin on the sweet potatoes. We're actually going to slice them into like one inch pieces. Yeah. There we go. This like reminds me of my childhood. Sitting there on like Thanksgiving morning or the night before watching my mom. Seriously. Cut these into like little fingers. Right. Now our favorite place was the, the kitchen, kitchen counter. counter. <laughs> we actually have a new podcast called The Kitchen Counter. And we don't really talk a ton about food no. on there, but we talk about a lot of fun things. Yeah. So if you want to listen, we'll put a link down below for you so you can find that. But it's just a fun thing we yeah. like to do. Now we have like a nine by 13 pan. Yes. We have our nonstick cooking spray. <gasps> and then add in our taters. Yes, so we're gonna just add, I think it's half of them, yeah. right? So layer, a full layer down. Sweet potatoes are on the bottom. Now we're gonna take, there's three tablespoons of butter here. We're just gonna take half of it and then cut up the other half. Spread them out the best that you can on top of the sweet potatoes. Now, every sweet potato is not going to have a piece of butter, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah you can eat one of those. You want this? It's not an apple, but it's just as good. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we have a half cup of caro syrup. That, so we're just gonna do half of it on top of these and just like a nice drizzle. Mm. And we have a half cup of brown sugar. Ooh, that feels like more than half a cup. That's, That's okay. okay. <laughs> so we're gonna do like- May have snuck in a little more. Right? <laughs> so the real half, half cup on one layer and then we'll do a half cup on another. That sounds you delicious. You can't go wrong with this. You, you can't. really can't. The more butter, the more sugar, the better. I agree. All right, Kendra had to step away. Knox needed some food, more food. So sweet potatoes are done. Now, this is how you do the make ahead. You're going to just cover this with foil right now, stick it in your fridge. Don't cook it yet, because if you cook it, it's gonna be too soggy. So we're gonna pretend we put it in the fridge, we pull it back out. I'm actually gonna cook this because I want to show you the finish because oh, it's so good. And I, I might want to taste it too. We're gonna cook this at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. For the best part of the whole recipe, we have, oh yeah, what do we have, Nox? Some mini mallows, huh? Yeah. So we're just gonna sprinkle these on top. I think mom always used pretty much the, whole, used bag. the whole bag. Because they kind of like almost disintegrate yeah. when you cook them. Like they puff up and then they and shrink yes. down a little. So you need a lot you of them. You need a lot. So we will put this back in the oven for about four to five minutes. Let the marshmallows become golden yes. beauties and then we're gonna taste test. 
Before we sample, I'm gonna take this recipe next level. Are you ready for it? I am ready for it. Never been done before. <laughs> Sweet cinnamon churro on top. <laughs> All right, Okay. now we sample. Mm-hmm. Five out of five. The last recipe is our classic green bean casserole. First, we're gonna have two cans of cut green beans. And yes. I know it's cut, but I actually love the Me cut too. green beans in the casserole. You wanna pour that one in? <laughs> yes. And then we're gonna add in a fourth cup of milk. Okay. And then cream, cream of, of mushroom. mushroom. So good, so creamy. It is. For this casserole, I swear, like, you just need the cream you of do. mushroom. You really do. And then this recipe calls for one and one third cups of these crunchy fried onions. They are so good. so good. Honestly, this makes the casserole for me. I could Agreed. just eat these. So I'm just gonna add half the container. Yeah. <laughs> I feel good about that. That's the nice thing about this recipe. Like yeah. eyeballing is is okay. Yeah. Add some pepper. All right, we're gonna dump this in okay. here. I believe, did it call for like a nine by nine pan, but yes. we're gonna use a nine by 13, it's just to make our lives a little yeah. easier. So if you are making this recipe ahead of time, cover this with foil, put it in your fridge until you're ready to bake. So you're first going to cook this at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, and then you're gonna take it out of the oven, nice. sprinkle on more of this goodness, the fried onions, then you're gonna put it back in the oven, same temperature, 350, for about five to seven more minutes just to crisp it up. Green beans, done. So good. Get those onions in there. Mmm. <laughs> you don't even need a tur the turkey at this point. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just there for the sides. Yeah. Out of all these, which one is your favorite? What would you pick? Based on the amount missing and how much I've eaten, sweet potatoes. <laughs> What about you? I am the same. Mine is by far. Sweet potatoes mm. is the winner. If you loved these Thanksgiving side dishes and you need more ideas, we have 10 more for you. You can find them right here.